It's Linda here from Banjo's Bead House with week four of our Seed Bead September celebration and this is the final week of Seed Bead Fun. I hope you've enjoyed the last few weeks as we've been going through different projects. Um, we've certainly had fun planning them and working on them and um, seeing people post photos of what they've been making has been awesome. Um, so before I get on to this week's project, which is a fun, I'm just going to pick it up if you didn't see my sneak peek, this gorgeous little rolling Rivoli. Um, so this is a great way to bezel if you don't like to bezel or if you've never attempted bezeling. This is a fun, easy um, way to make a bezel. Um, I want to show you one of the earrings that I finished um, from my Tessellate kit. Now this is a class that Paula from Honor String is teaching. Um, I've actually used very similar colors to what I'm working with tonight. Um, so this is, I've done the first part of my class. Those classes are ongoing and kits are available. So it's a fun two-parter um, and you can make a stunning pair of earrings and you'll learn to use that same earring component there to make a beautiful pendant. So lots of fun and a different way of using the ruler beads, which is the core bead for the start of this project as well. So it's a fun way of seeing two different ways of how to use the same bead. Um, Hi Therese and happy Friday to you too. It's definitely a good day to be Friday. It's a little windy so if my door blows in I will be racing for that here in the shop. When the door blows in things go flying quite quickly. Um, the other cool thing I'm going to show you tonight before we start the project is I got a lovely delivery from Shrosky this afternoon of some 18 millimeter Rivoli's in the majestic blue and it's just stunning so I thought I'd have a little share with you guys of that one um, before we get going. Um, and lastly of my list of things before we start, um, I have almost finalized the October box. Um, I've already started picking parts of it. Um, I was just working our way through it. I'm hoping to get that up on the weekend, up over on the website, sorry, it's been a long day, um, up onto the website late over the weekend. Um, it's a little bit different this time. It's not going to be pure seed bead focus. We are putting in a mixture of findings and stringing materials. Um, to really challenge yourself to look outside the world of CBS. And hi, Kelly. Great. Glad you could join us too. Um, the other cool thing, I've commissioned two artists with this box. So Kaya from K2 Designs is making us, has made us some beautiful um, handmade wired uh, ear hooks. And Liz DeLuca has, is in the process of making us some beautiful um, custom glass discs. Now this box is going to be celebrating all things pink. Um, because pink is the birthstone for October, or rose technically is, which would be this lovely Shrosky colour that we're working with tonight. So it got me thinking of combining elements of rose gold with elements of pink, and who's my favourite person who loves those colours? Well, that would be Paula from Honor String. So the other thing I'm doing um, that Paula's kindly agreed to is she'll be doing two um, live projects across October. Um, the first one is actually opening the same box that you that 10 lucky people um, will be able to buy, um, featuring Liz's disc and Kaya Sings and all sorts of other pink and rose gold goodness. And she's going to do a design on the fly. So it's going to be taking the elements that are in there and everything else she can find in her beading studio around her and showing you how you can incorporate and work with a variety of different pieces um, to make some stunning things. So I'm looking forward to seeing how she responds to that challenge. Um, and then she's also got a special project with one element she's requested to go into that box. So two exciting um, lives coming up for you guys in October with Paula doing that one. Um, so that kit detail will be available over the weekend and I'll have a newsletter hopefully out um, early next week. Um, and once Liz's discs arrive, we'll be ready to ship those. So we've timed Paula's videos in time to get those out to you guys um, with Express Post, which is what I'll be doing for those, um, just because Australia Post is a little crazy at the moment. Um, so I'm also hoping that everybody's orders are getting out to them safe and sound. Um, for orders this week, I'm still in the process of actually catching up on dispatching them. It's been a little insane on the admin side, and I'm quite a bit behind this week. So um, you might be seeing some emails from me in the weird hours of the morning as I'm catching up on admin. Um, but we will get there. Um, the great thing is we're busy and that's the important thing and keeping you guys creating is always great. So for today's fun, as I said, we're going to start with having some fun opening some Shorosky crystals. So I'm going to tilt you guys down and we will get to it. So in the middle of my mat, well, pinky goodness, you'll see the lovely majestic blue in the 1122 and this is the 18 mil. So this is specially ordered in for one of my customers and hers is already in the post. So how glorious is that color? 
I'm so <laughs> we're excited to have you on board too, Paula. But how glorious is this blue? I know it's a little deviation. It's the perfect thing for Sapphire being your birthstone for September. Um, and lucky enough, it arrived um, in time for um, one customer's class. So that's really handy. But these are gorgeous. Um, they are in stock on the website now, so you can have fun ordering those. And I'll have them out in the shop tomorrow morning. Okay, but enough of blue. It's all back to pink. So this is the piece we're making this week. We are starting with a 12 mil Rivoli and we will wind up with this gorgeous little piece. Um, so if you've never done bezeling before, this is a really great way of getting your head rounded and getting started um, because you don't need to do all of the peyote work. Um, yeah, that color is gorgeous. <laughs> um, so we start to do this with 10 of the um, ruler beads. God, my brain is just gone. So I've just cherry picked 10 out of the um, container. I've had fun. I've tried to pick ones with um, a nice surface at the top because you will actually see it, but it doesn't matter which way you do it. You will get to see pockets of it as you are moving around the piece as well. So it's just about finding and setting it up so you get to see some of that luscious um, shine on these so I've got a little bit of variation here where there's gonna be a little bit of black as well um, but it's all about having fun as you can see I'm using my favorite um, jet slipper it um, which is I know one of Paula's favorites now um, so to do this it's a matter of stringing on and I'm using a size 12 today because I will be playing with 15s um, otherwise I would do this with a 10 uh, we have nine on um, and I'm using the Miyuki, sorry, the Toho um, size 11 rounds in here. And we're just going to get that last one. Oh, come on needle. There we go. So that's all my ruler beads on my piece now. So it's then just a matter of dragging it through all my thread. Now I'm using a six pound fire line that's just tangled around something on the side of my desk. Joy of the things you guys don't see off the side to the camera. So the next step for this then is to pass your needle back through all of this and then we're going to tie it off in a loop. I found it was easier to do this with my wicker tight tension not to tie the knot here first, um, which is what sometimes the instructions call for. Um, I found it a little bit awkward when I did that. It didn't quite sit straight. So I like to do this loop first and then tie it off. Okay, there we go. And I hope the audio is okay. I have the microphone almost in face hitting distance today. So I'm hoping we've fixed the audio issue. Okay, so you can see I've got my nice loop of beads there. And we're just going to pull those two cords together just to tighten that off. And then just do a simple knot, which I am going to do twice. And that's it. So we've got the start. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to carry that thread through that ruler bead. So we're going to go through the 11 first, which has the knot in it, and into that one there. And what we're going to do now is pass to the other side of the ruler bead. So we've stitched down one side, we're going to stitch the other side, very much like when we did the pebble bead with the nib beads. We're stitching the other side. So we're doing a pass up, we've got our thread coming out there, we're going in here. And this is the point where you've got to pick your top and your bottom side. So probably should have flipped some of those over in my pickup, but that's okay. I don't mind actually having a bit of variation. And I've just got my black off to the side. And it's just threading through one black in between each. Sorry, trying to also look up. Yes, woohoo, hello, it's Friday to you too, Alex. It's always fun when it's Friday. And I hope the postman into those in Melbourne has been kind to all of you and given you 
lots of fun sparkly deliveries today. So I'm just going to pull some of that slip through. Just primarily to get it out of my way right now. Sorry if I'm not being as talkative. It's been a rather long week and my brain's on a couple of things at the moment. Okay. And you know what I didn't do is check all my holes, thankfully. So far, so good. Haven't had any issues with holes. Well, that's good Alex I'm glad the postman has been kind to you this week I know Paula's received one of her surprise parcels so that's kind of fun so if you're not aware Paula also on her Facebook page which is on a string does um, live videos once a month on a Saturday morning and she challenged four of us to actually send her a mix of beads and we've been plotting behind her back the colorway um, so she's received the first of those parcels um, today she shared on her video so it's going to be quite fun to see how long she can hold out um, and resist the temptation of actually opening one but uh, I'm pretty sure she's got strong willpower Oy. I think I worked with too long a thread yeah and I've caught through my thread so it happens to all of us easy fix okay so we've got our double bands that way so we start to twist this now and start pulling on that because we actually needed to form a channel so we've now got our nice little ring and this is what is actually your bezel so instead of having to do rows and rows and rows of peyote that little circle is uh, it is Paula I'll be posting the pattern for this on the blog um, once the video is all done so it'll be available for everyone to download and anybody who got the box got a printed copy but you can see there we have our little bezel I obviously it needs to be tightened up um, but it's a really quick way of working up around when you're not used to bezeling um, so yeah that's what drew me to this um, is that not all of my customers have their head around peyote and when they're just starting this is a really fun way to get going so I'm just going to go around a couple extra just to start tightening that off and this will tighten up as we do the next step which actually mirrors what a normal bezel would look like so the next step so for those of you who are following at home with the pattern I believe I am heading towards I've just jumped ahead and not paying attention to the pattern so that's really handy okay looks like I'm up to step seven now and we are going to start switching to using the size 15s so I'm going to move that little pile so what we're actually going to do now is this inside track but we're actually going to do the back first and that's where the the um, Rivoli will sit in so you need to pick your back and your front so I kind of like that one for the front so this will be my back so we are picking up two of these tiny 15s which is why I'm using the um, size 12 needle and we're coming out of this 11 here and we're going to go into this 11 here Oops, and we just want to make sure that they are tucked in and start to be pulling on this so that we make sure we get good tension as we're going and so it's a lot of size 15s one of Paula's things to torture us all with I kid they're fun tiny little versatile beads yeah the colors are pretty um, I had a lot of fun playing around with 
um, these after I did the big fixer bead pendant. So these were kind of the earrings I wanted to go with that. And that became the impetus to do um, this pattern in the box for this month. So the Jet AB, AB I believe, is partnered with the um, Sapphire Crystal in the blue box. Um, and it's really stunning. And then I've got from memory the gold um, and a green toned ruler bead with the um, vitriol medium in the green box um, which would be stunning too so at some point in the future I will actually make all of those up um, so you guys can see more colorway options with this but this is a good little stash one because it doesn't require a huge amount of beads um, and it's a great way of working with your Rivoli's um, I am going to be I am in the process of experimenting around a couple of other Rivoli's to see if this will hold as well because it's just a fun quick way to work up I chose specifically to put the black 11's in between these rulers just to keep a very defined black border um, but you could work all in one colorway as well yay for parcel for you on tuesday so lots of fun for you with all those gorgeous um bridal white pearls miss kelly okay so nearly halfway After this there's only one more to go on this side anyway okay so this time I'm going into that 11 but I'm also going to go into if I can do it in one needle movement no I'm also going to go into the first of those 15s from memory yep Am I going through both? Sorry, it's been a little bit since I did this pattern, so I'm just going to sanity check myself. Yep, through one. Oops. Well, Kelly, when you get them done, I'd love to see a photo of the finished piece too, because I think it's a really cool project. Okay, so I've come out of the first of the pair that we put on last time. I am picking up 115, going down through the other half of that pair and then up through the first half of the next pair. So this is where it starts to mirror the effect of peyote stitch um, in a bezel. Um, without actually having to do peyote stitch so it's a very cool whoops and of course I get a big tangle this is what I get for putting probably too long a thread on but I hate dealing with joins So we're out, we're going, oh come on 15, work with me, there we go. just making sure that thread actually is captured properly no
There we go. I was working on my test work piece last night, getting my homework prepped. Thought I had one circle all completely done and realised I'd caught a thread. So now I'm being a little paranoid about caught threads. Because having to cut up a piece that was just about perfect was rather frustrating. So going in. Oops. Does anybody else send their beadwork flying like that when they're working or is it just me? Further in, we're going back down through that 15. Get that pass through through. Going up. If I can swing it, we'll go up the next one at the same time. We're nearly done. I guess one of the things I thought I could mention whilst you're all watching me slow the bee um, is COVID has presented, I guess, many, many challenges, but there's many people who've been adapting to it as well. And one of the great things that great organisations that have been adapting has been a number of our bead societies. So there's three main ones that, well, technically four, I guess, that I'm aware of. Um, you've got two in Victoria under the Bead Society of Victoria and then their offshoot, the Bead Society of think it's called Geelong, I'm sure somebody can correct me. Um, I know I'm a member of BSV, um, which is this Victorian one, and I know they've been doing great, as I say that I've stuffed up, so we'll be going back. Um, they've been doing great beat alongs, great Zoom sessions, really keeping everybody engaged and interactive. Um, we've got their upcoming expo which is going to be a fun virtual one normally I'm on the road for that one but this time I'll be doing it behind the scenes on a camera so it's going to be an interesting challenge um, so they've been doing some fabulous stuff in Sydney we've got the MacArthur Bead Society um, group um, so which I refer to as Maccabees um, I'm also a member there and Banjos is actually a sponsor of that organization as well um, they've been doing some fabulous things with their monthly meetings um, and all of their ongoing challenges each month. Um, so some great creativity there. And then up on the Sunshine Coast um, and for our Queenslanders, we've got the Sunshine Beaters. So they're looking and actually starting to get ready for some face-to-faces, the Lucky Ducks, um, and working out how they can do that. Um, but again, they've also been sharing within their group um, different patterns and different ideas of how to keep everybody busy so there's lots of fun going on that way and there's some great organizations you can check out to keep busy um, that you've also got the seed beads and more Facebook group which is keeping 
everyone fantastically busy with um, fantastic months of programs um, and different designers coming on. So lots of ways you can keep yourself entertained. So I'm now done with the back of my bezel. We can jump through now this 11 and I'm going to jump through its partnering ruler bead when I can grab it in a second. Oops, tray's now catching. So I'm just going to go into there and then pop out the other side. Which sometimes is easier said than done. And then we're going to come out that 11. Oops. You can see the result of my tight tension. Mine's actually starting to buckle in a little bit. Um, I probably need to loosen off my tension a little bit, but that's just a problem that I know I have um, and I deal with it as best I can. So now we can actually pop in our Shrosky crystal. So you can actually see the bezel is half done. Um, so it hasn't taken a huge amount of time. I'm not sure I've been alive for, say so working on this for about 20 minutes um, and you've already got your crystal setting in place. And now we're basically repeating that stages of the 15s to lock it in place. And then after that, we get to embellish it. And the great thing for this is as you are playing around with other um, shapes or other size rounds, it's just a matter of working out um, the initial band. Um, and how you can make that work. So I've been playing around with it at home, running two threads, pulling in different directions, trying to create a bezel. Um, as I succeed in that experiment a little bit more, um, I'll share some of my the numbers, I guess, of where I've been using um, as I get time to, but also happy to see what you guys come up with. Um, in this configuration of playing with the ruler beads, um, standing upright, I have seen some amazing um, shapes being formed and intricate S's and letters and um, just from interlocking seed beads in amongst all the rulers this way so and then just the rulers themselves so it is it has been a fun experiment um, playing with these beads I know they have been around for a while um, but like all two hole beads you there is a lot of them um, it takes a while to get your head around how to use them to um yeah just start working with them so i hope that the box has given you all a chance to do that and this is the perils of tight tension is getting your needle in there i really feel like i'm going to break my needle trying this no we're just going to start bending it But I will post some links up in this um, to a couple of bead groups for you guys to check out. Um, they're some of my favorites to keep me entertained um, and give me lots of different ideas. And we'll expose you guys along the same way. That one really does not want to go through. He is going to be my problem child. I'm going to pop the wiggly out for a moment. There we go. Sometimes you just got to give it patience and wiggle and wiggle and wiggle. The beaded angels and stars and things all look really cool. I know a number of people who are addicted to stars at the moment. I'm having fun dissecting color charts so that they can get them into their favorite colorways. So always fun to try new things. And the angels have looked particularly stunning. I've also seen some amazing chess sets. Um, 
I was kind of blown away with the Katie Dean one that um, one of my customers, Christine, has been working on and has actually completed. And then I saw Kat Thomas post up this um, gothic style one and just the level of detail that's gone into the chess players is just, yeah, a, it's one of those draw doppers you just go, how did you come up with that kind of thing? Um, but yeah, it's the beauty of some of these groups. You can just see some absolutely amazing stuff and you can interact with a number of the designers who are in this crazy time promoting their online classes, but also sharing a lot of patterns and a lot of ideas. Um, so it's a great learning opportunity and a great place to meet and chat with beaters from all over the world. Just picking up two more fifties. We're close to halfway. Christmas nativity scenes. I have not seen one of those. Um, I've seen some photos of people who've done um, Santa's Village. Um, I've seen a Rudolph with a glowing nose because they actually managed to embed an LED light into a piece. Um, there's some seriously fun Christmas stuff. Um, there's some seriously scary Halloween stuff floating around at the moment too since it's only a week or so, no, a month or so away. Um, yeah, there is a lot of fun out there to be found. Let's go here. Okay, next troublesome one. If my tension wasn't so tight on the first one, this job part would probably be easier. It's going to make the finishing steps really hard if I can't get into these 11s. But, you know. Those of us with tight tension like a challenge. Please come on, lock in. So with one more to go, you can see the inner ring of the bezel is just about done. And then it's just doing that decorative um, pico style of effect to finish this off. Okay, so we are through our 11, and we're just going to do the up through the 15, pick up one, go down, try not to capture our threads as we work. Repeat, going down. Up, pick up one, and go down. Given the way that's lifted, I probably didn't have that on tight enough at the outset. So at least going through this again, I can tighten that up. last thing you want is our gorgeous little Shirosky popping out. Okay, this little thread is now redundant and is annoying me. Making sure my actual working thread is out of the way. I'm just going to zap him off. 
Curb tappers are very handy. They will ball up the end of that uh, wire and stop that thread and stop it from coming off. And now my thread is free to work. Just for those working on replay, at least you can fast forward through this bit. See if Steph knows it's on repeat and just zoom through. Thank you for those who are staying live and watching me as I go. It's just a lot of repetition at this point. But you can start to see that beautiful pico effect coming through. Um, and the bezel is actually nearly complete. Oops. Yeah, I'm late to picking up the thread zappers. I had been using scissors, but once I started using mine, I can't say I've looked back. Let's go to pick one up right before I've actually got my needle ready. <laughs> oh, thank you for that, Alex. I don't really know if I do have model hands. I certainly know I need to go get a manicure, but I haven't had time. That and doing different things, you keep breaking your nails, so it's uh, not so handy. But I do need to talk to my accountant to see if I could tax write off a manicure, since my hands are on camera so much. And I will say to him that you know I've been told I have model hands. See what his reaction to that is. And we're on our last 15. We have made it through the two circuits of 15s. The tiny torture is done. I do joke. I mean, 15s are a very versatile tiny bee, but they can be tricky at times too. So you can see just like that, we're what, 38 minutes in. So roughly, let's say 30 to 34 minutes or so. Of actual beading and we have got our Shrosky crystal completely bezeled in now if you want to protect the foil you could always go back in and finish that off is this using a new bead please <laughs> this is using okay I'll recap for Miss um, Penny who's just joined us so we're making this one tonight this is a 12 mil Rivoli Shrosky crystal in there and we are playing around with the ruler beads which we used in the pebble bead which was my first week of CP September so week two um, so I'm using Pretty Slipper It, which is just a lovely shiny color. What we've done is we created a channel um, ring with the um, Rivoli's, sorry, the ruler beads. 
And then we've just bezeled around the edge there to lock in the Shrosky crystal. So that's what we've been up to. So you can see both sides are there. And now we're about to do the outer edge. Um, so you'll be able to catch us up with what we've done so far on the replay when I get it posted. Um, and I'll have the pattern for this on the blog as well on the website um, before I head home for the evening. So now, if you are playing around with the pattern, we have finished step 16. I'm just looking where we're up to so I can keep myself on track. We have done... Okay, we are now up to step 20 and we're going to get to, I think, about 28 steps of the pattern tonight. Um, I will walk you through what I chose not to do, uh, primarily because it didn't have the bead in stock um, and that's how I got my finished effect. Um, but there's another option you've got as well. So for the next one, uh, I need to exit through one of the rulers. So we are going to... My thread's coming there, so I'm going to straight up and exit through there. Making sure that thread works. Yep. So I'm now coming out of one of the ruler beads, and this is where I believe... Yep. I'm now switching to my pink um, size 11s. Um, if you're only using one color for this, you'd be picking up your one color. Um, I'm opting to use pink here to do my um, decoration. I mean, you could leave this as is, but we're doing the embellishment, which starts with doing this little detail work around the top. So following the instructions. Sorry, I forgot to read ahead to this last night. So we are picking up three and going to the next ruler bead. Okay, this is where I made a deviation in my pattern. Okay, this is why I had to stop and check. So the original pattern actually calls for 315, 311 to go through all of this. Um, and you only use 1-8 when you're doing your jump ring connection here. I liked the idea of actually having this as more of an elongated point. So in your kit, you've got enough 11s to do it the way the pattern is. Yes, it's pink, Penny. <laughs> um, so I've actually opted to do size eights um, around to give this more of an exaggerated point. Um, so that was my choice and this is my deviation from the pattern. So I'm going to show you my deviation in the pat the printed pattern that we you'll get on the blog. Um, it's using 11s. This is where I'm now confusing myself. Um, so thank you all for your little bit of patience there. So I'm picking up 111, 11. And we've come out of a ruler bead and what we're going to do is pass over this 11 and go through the next ruler bead. Oops. And we're going to pull that all the way through and hopefully I've worked one side to another. Yep. So you can see there we're starting to form that little peak. Okay. So it's one of my 11s, one of my 8s, one of my 11s is what I'm doing. If you want to follow the pattern in its original form, it's 311s. So I'm just going to get that knot out if I haven't already. Okay. Yep, yeah, okay. So to me, it's one, one, one. I have also changed my pink here um, just to go from, you know, add an extra shade of pink just to be a little bit fun. And this is again where you can, you know, take a look at a pattern, do some little adapto adaptations to make it work for you. In this case, I changed the seed bead um, and I've also played around with the color options. So it's ways you can play with shades of things um, and ways you can choose to exaggerate shapes. Now, um, Paula often will use, as I'm noticing, um, demi rounds where I'm using an eight here um, as an extra like nice little um, edge treatment um, but the eight works brilliantly for this so but it's just ways you can think about how you edge off um, your designs so I'm just going eight eleven eight eleven into the ruler and just want to make sure it is setting up 
with a peak because you need that eight to be out on the edge. Try not to go through your 11s like I just, your original 11s. You just want to work through the rulers for this. This is where nails get broken. Oi, that 11 really just wants to say, I want to play. There we go. Sometimes you do need to tell your bot your bees who's boss. would you credit it I forgot to put the 11 on so I'm actually going to take my needle off rather than try to get back through that because I'm excited because we're nearly at the end of one side okay so my favorite little trick if you are trying to th when you're trying to thread your needles since you normally don't see me do it, is with a pair of flat nose pliers, I just like to give it a little bit of a flat because you're dealing with a round cord but an oval needle. So this way you get an oval thread that is generally a lot easier to thread through. So that's my favorite little trick. That's why these little Zerons kind of disappeared from the shop into my home kit. Um, because they're nice and fine, but you can use any flat nose pliers you've got at home to do that. But it's a great little trick um, to do that. I know several people use their teeth at times. Um, you are dealing with a really strong braided thread. You might actually wind up leaving marks in your teeth doing it. Um, so much easier just to use a pair of chain nose or flat nose pliers to do that instead. One more eight. We've got pink, pink and glorious pink. Okay. So I have popped up through that ruler bead, but I have avoided any of the others that are on the other side there. So what you'll see so far is we have the makings of a really pretty star around there. So now what we're going to do is pass our thread and come out on this side of the ruler bead. And now it's pick up 111, go through the eight that's there, or the 11 if you're following the pattern, and then through the ruler bead. And what you'll see then is that as you're pulling that over is that it's starting to put that little eight into the middle of your work. So it's forming a beautiful little peak, but also starting to shrink in your work. What this does allow for you to do if you choose to do the last steps of the embellishment that are on this project, which I didn't do purely because I didn't have any pinch beads at home and I don't have any in the store yet. Um, I'm working on getting some in um, but this pattern as you'll see calls for pinch beads to be used as a spacer in between each of the 11s um, but I'm sure you could pick up or find a pearl or a bicone or a round or another bead in your stash if you wanted to further out 
further the embellishment. I liked making this into a star. Um, I thought it was a kind of a fun way of, you know, stars remind me of sparkling, you know, and from the fairy, from the kids song of Twinkle Twinkle. Um, and so I liked the idea of making this into a star and emphasizing that because then we've got a lovely shiny Swarovski in the middle of this. So you've got two peaks now. You've got the, the yeah, oops. You can see what happens when Linda doesn't pay attention. She's thrust the thread entirely. So we'll just be de-needling again. I don't always take my needle off, but where it's running back through this sort of pass-throughs, I do because it's just a lot easier. Okay, so de-needling, getting the threads out of the way. Paying more attention to what I'm actually doing would be good. But I'm sure I'm not the only one who makes mistakes like that one. We all do it when we're distracted. Oops. That's the other one I'm going to have to cut. I flattened that wider than my needle. Yep. So you can over flatten. This is why I normally do needles before you see me do this on live. It's not my favorite of jobs. But it is one that every beater knows they have to do at some point. Okay, so we have to be going through that one up our 11 going back through the ruler and that looks a lot better so I'm just going to make sure that 11 is so the 8 is sitting nice and proudly at the top as I pull through all my tension and we go on to our next one and don't repeat the mistake of last time. Okay. And we keep going. Remembering to go into my eight would be good. Two more sets to go. Thank you all for your patience of sitting here watching me bead this.
So as I'm coming out of the last ruler bead, and this is where I'll stop actually working <laughs> with tonight, the next part is actually to do a circuit through and do some half hitch knots and finish off. Now these 11s here are really tricky to get back into for some of them. Some of them are nice and easy. And I just, yeah. So you'll often wind up coming through your beadwork. I do that and then I get my exit back out because it's just a matter of getting through there. So just exiting out and what I'm going to do is just slip my needle back through there just to get that thread back where I want it to be. But I will keep working my way through um, these beads um, till I get through and as I said do a couple of half inches to finish off. See where my thread zapper. To turn this little beauty into its earring, it's just a matter of grabbing your jump ring. And this is why they called for one um, eight in the pattern, is because an eight mil jump ring and the size eight will generally, sorry, a jump ring and a size eight will generally work together. Now I am working with the perma finish. Um, seed beads which have a slightly smaller hole but you can wiggle your way through um, if you're using a hook with a loop you could just simply um, thread your ear hook on at that point I've actually got the really easy pendant ear hooks which means all you need to do is thread on and push close and voila you have your earring uh, what Okay, it looks like I got put off because I've got the radio in the background and I got a warning over live music. Note to myself, if I'm going this long, I'll kill the radio next time. Hopefully you guys got to see me actually finish that off. Basically, it's just opening a jump ring, threading through one of the size eights and just slipping your ear hook on. I've got a little bit of work to actually finish the thread off, but there is your rolling revolving earring. Um, you could easily turn this into a pendant with a larger one. It's just a matter of having a bit of fun. Um, but you can see there we've got a gorgeous pair of earrings. It's, it would take you less than an hour should do to make each one. So in two hours you've got a beautiful pair of sparkling earrings that are very easy to customize and uniquely make your own. Just using two or three sizes of seed beads, some ruler beads and a lovely central sparkle. Um, thank you so much for joining me for this week's Facebook Live. I'll get this up on the blog. Um, stay tuned for next week when we have some more fun and continue all the sparkly goodness. So bye for now. Have a fabulous fun weekend. See you guys next week.